now is where cultures change. Like life changes with you. Because I am gonna now is when I'm gonna be picky with you guys throughout the rest of the workshop on heal. Yesterday I didn't. I really bit my tongue, trust me. We talked about it last night at dinner. I was really chomping. I wanted to say so many things. I wanted to say loose lead. I wanted to say don't let him sniff. I wanted to say nose up. I wanted to say, you know, don't let him set the pace. All these things. So when I move, I want my dogs to move with me. You guys will see me do this whenever I walk around with Taylor. Whenever I walk around. It's constant. Heel work is constant. I stop, they stop. I don't mind them sitting. We're going to talk about sitting to the whistle in a minute. But just because you're not up, just because it's not your turn to show and I'm going to watch you, doesn't mean that heel work stops. So from this moment on, for the next day and a half anyway, i got control over that stuff. And I'm going to be changing your life with heel. Because we're going to make sure we're on it. So I called Jeff, because Jeff went like this. That did nothing for that dog. What it did was it hurt me, because when I actually want to get something from him, it doesn't mean as much. Because he's used to it. He's getting numb to it. It's like, if you've got... I don't know what it's like. I can't think of a good analogy right now. But if, if you've got something that, if you've got pain that's kind of throbbing all the time, you just kind of get used to it. So if you don't have pain, and all of a sudden I get a little toothache, man, do I whine like a little baby. Because I'm not used to it. And there's a little bit of pain. But after a while, I've had bad backs. Where when I, when I don't have a bad back, I realize how bad having a bad back really is. But for a while, I just get used to it. It becomes normal. So then all of a sudden it get, feels better and I go, wow, how did I deal with that for so long? Well, this is the bad back. After a while, it just becomes normal. But this is like, wow, this is really nice. But when the bad back comes, you sure notice it. You're just not used to it. So he asked me if I could walk some squares. So I'm going to use this square. So I'm going to ask Jeff to back up. There. There. You corrected yourself. You wanted to give him a little nagging pressure at the very end, and you said, no, he's watching. And you let it go. Good job. Now, squares are extension. After we, the reason we do 180s is because that idea of getting a rhythm needs to happen. It was hard for us to do it in such small quarters here. It's hard. There was a couple times where I took people's dogs, and I know you were struggling, and it wasn't your fault because our setup wasn't the best. But there were times where I took people's dogs and I went for longer walks than they did. And probably because you guys didn't know you could. I didn't say you could walk as far as you want. So you're really obedient. You guys listen really good. I said walk on your line and some of you were afraid to get off the line. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes I needed to take a dog and I just needed to go a little ways. And I needed to get a little rhythm. And I needed to get figure out where it was that we were going to start making it work. And then when it was bad, I got a chance to correct it. But it, we had to get good before I could correct the bad. So once we did that lines, if we were outside, we'd have been able to walk a lot longer and, and do it a little freer. But so when we did the 180s to get the dogs to figure out front to back, that dog doesn't have a problem with front to back. That dog had a little issue with out or in. That one has an issue with in. So, but front to back is usually the problems. And so 180s fix that because as soon as the dog gets out of the zone, I change direction. And if the dog hangs back too much, I'll turn into it. And then they get embarrassed because they're out of position. So that's how we get dogs to start figuring out their pace to match up with me. When I turn into squares, I get dogs to start being a lot more honest. So I walk, walk, walk. I turn 90 degrees instead of 180 degrees. And I get dogs to go half turn, go forward, half turn, go forward, half turn, go forward, half turn, go forward. It's hard for them to do this if they don't, the, the more dramatic is the 180, so they kind of learn that a little better. Then we get them to this, and now I can walk in squares, and really what it is is it's just being precise. So it, you see that correction right there was, he, no, there. I didn't mind him standing there. It wasn't, it wasn't bothering me, but before I get going, I'm going this way. If he's here, my first start is into him, and he's facing that way. It's a lot like when we line our dogs for retrieves. If your dog is lying like this, you know where this dog is going? Nose the tail like a rifle, front sight to back. He's going that way, even if I want him to go that way. 
He's going that way. Because his body is pointed that way. So if I'm lining a dog for a retrieve, that's what I'm doing to him. I'm stepping into him, and I'm lining him that way. So same is true with heel work. So now I got him in position, lining, heel. Got his attention, her, her attention. Turn. Send. Send it. Turn. Send it. This is different. Hasn't done this yet. Turn. Go. Turn. Go. Less of a pull. Turn. Go. Turn. Go. She adjusted. Did you see it? I felt that I didn't see it. How many times did it take me to go around the square? So by repetition and consistency and having the same thing happen over and over again, she starts to anticipate. Go. As she has a tendency, what she was just doing was hanging out behind me. It's hard to get out of position when I'm behind me. Now I'm going to reverse it and go back to my 180. She hangs up. There. Correction needed right now. There, I like that little half step she took for me. See she's decided to go, oh, I know he's coming, half step back. She's getting a lot closer to doing 180. Half step back. Half step back. Half step. Now I'm going to go the full way with her. There. Now I, I leaned her a little bit. I didn't steer her. I went one of these. And just the weight of it alone got her to move. Watch, watch my turn now. That's all. That's all. This part right here, feel, touching that part right there, is what's turning her. Feel. get her feet going for me. There's just too far there's just too far in my way. There. There. I'm going the other way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead. She's better at right hand turns than she is left. Here's our bad corner. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. So, she's not in perfect position by any means, but she's not in such, she's trying her ass off right now. She's really trying. Like, if you see, there's not much more than this out of position. Look at how little it is. Come on, I don't want to do it. Come on, I don't want to do it. 
There. I loaded up. I was about to snap her one. Come on. That's it. Oh boy, I'm close. Come on. There. So by doing these drills, who remembers the heel work with this dog yesterday? Max, come on. Now I want Max to do it. Because who remembers the heel work from yesterday of Maddox with that pup? Out there. It was tough, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go now. Now, stop for a second. I'm gonna go through a checklist with you. The first thing was, the second I gave the dog back, the dog decided, you know what? You're not gonna have to do what he did before. No, you gotta do what he's gonna do. So Max, you're gonna let him know, let her know. You gotta do it. So, your hand, maybe a little bit right there. Now lift up. So I'm positioning where this goes. Okay. Now, let it down. And now, ah, 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 ah. So that right there is that dog saying, I can get away with anything with you. Jump up, put my feet on you. No. So the next time that happens, Max, you need to go up to the same level that I went to the first time I corrected this dog was this. Didn't hurt her, scared her. Come on, over. You come on. Yeah, right here. Now go forward. Now turn into her and bump her with me. Bump her with me. And snap that lead when she does that. Turn. Go. Go. Stop. Okay, now here's the line, here's the line example. I want you to walk the line. Stay on the line. You on the line, dog over. Because the dog is responding already. I can see that already. Now go. There. Loose lead. Loose. Snap that. And that dog jumps up, you correct it. Turn in. Go. Turn in. Go. Turn in. Now walk further. Keep going further. Now turn in. Go further, go further, go further. Turn to your right now. Turn to your right, right now. There, go, 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 snap. That one deserved a snap, because that dog wasn't going to turn. Keep going. Turn right. Go, go. Turn right. Turn right. Go. Dull. It was too dull around the corner. So when it, when, keep going, keep going. Snap, miss it. Turn, go. Loose lead, lower your left hand there. Keep going. Turn to the right. Turn to the right. Snap. Gotta be sharp. Gotta be sharp. Turn to the right. Snap. You go. Turn to the right. Go. Go. There. That was the best direction yet. Do it again. Go. There. Now see if you have to do that. Turn and go. There. You, you didn't have to crack. Did you see the dog go away? Turn. Go. Keep going. Turn and go. Go. There. Turn and go. There. No snap needed. There, no snap either. Now stop. Now stop. Now get the dog to sit. Lift up, snap. Stop right there. So, something changed. Your hand is way up here, and this is where you first got reaction. That's too high. Right there. Okay? So, we're going to mark what I would do is that, and that's a little tight. With him, what I would do is I'd get a leash that's the right way, and I'll put, I'll put marker marks on it. Now, see, this is where your left hand always is. 
This is where your right hand always is. And pretty soon it's going to get so comfortable that the dog's going to form the habits because you're doing it right mechanically. And then when the habits form, then you can get sloppy and you can carry the lead however you want because it really won't matter because you won't have to use it. But you can't use it if your hands aren't in the right spot. Got it? Who thinks that was better heel work than it was outside? You're, you're crazy. You didn't see him yesterday if you don't think that. Nice job. All right, so heel and back. Now, I'm going to say heel and back, and here's the test. I'm, I'm letting everybody have the answer right now for all the teachers out there. So when I say heel the dog's back, we're done with something. I'm going to say heel the dog's back. Go ahead, put the dogs up. I'm going to see how many people decide to say the hell with heel work. We're just going back because we're, we're done. We're kenneling up. And hands will change, and dogs will get out of position, and then we'll be sniffing, and we'll be doing all that. And I'm going to call you out the rest of the way. So when I say go ahead, heel the dog back, and put him up. I want you to really go, hands right, yep, check. Dog's in the right position, yep. Loose lead, yep. Correct if I need to, yep. Thinking about sniffing correct. All of this stuff from now on. Because this is one ball you won't be able to set down for the next day and a half. And when you go home, I recommend you keep the ball going. Because as soon as you get dogs that connect to you with the heel work, every drill we do from here on out is going to be 100 times easier. If you can't get good heel work, you're going to really struggle with the drills. To the point that you might not be able to do them at all. Because it'll just be a mess. All right? So put the dogs up. The pups that are struggling with the stairs go last. And we're going to work those guys up. Thank you.